So this lens right here is my contact Zeiss 35mm f2.8 AEJ and it's my fifth lens in my contact Zeiss vintage lens stills kit. And I absolutely love this lens. A 35mm is an absolute staple in any photographer or filmmaker's kit. A 35 just feels so perfect on any kind of sensor, whether it's full frame or super 35. A 35 isn't as wide as say a 25 or 28, naturally and it's not as tight as say a 50 but it's a very happy medium and i find it to be a pretty solid spot for pretty much really anything that i shoot a 35 up close feels nice and intimate and a 35 from far away doesn't feel as wide and distorted as say a 28 or 25. 35 is usually as wide as i would normally go so i definitely had to pick up this lens to add to my kit and it's been one of my most used lenses so far so with contact zeiss lenses there are two versions of the 35 millimeter there's a 1.4 and a 2.8 the 1.4 is a lot larger than the 2.8 and it can be found for about $1,400 on eBay in a near mint condition. The 2.8 can be found for about $300 to $500 in a near mint condition, so I opted for that one. It's a lot smaller than the 1.4 and the price just made a lot of sense for me. I don't really shoot wide open at 1.4 anyways, so with the 2.8 being a lot slower, it doesn't really affect my shooting as much. I'd rather have the space and size savings in this lens, especially on my FX3. These smaller, slower contact primes just fit so well with the body on the FX3, so it just makes a lot of sense for me. All my other contact primes are 2.8s besides my 50 1.4 and they're all about the same size and with this 35 being the same size and 2.8 it fits in seamlessly with the rest of the lenses. So my 35-2.8 is an AE lens. With contact Zeiss lenses, there's an AE and an MM. They're basically the same thing, but the AE version has Ninja Star Bokeh. It's caused by the way the aperture blades stop down and there's a certain section in these lenses where it creates a Ninja Star. I very rarely see it, so I don't really mind it. And I feel like the image quality is pretty much the same between AE and MM. So the AE lenses are a lot cheaper because no one wants Ninja Star Bokeh, which I don't really care because even if it shows up, my footage will now look different than everyone else's. So that alone will definitely separate your work from other people's work, but it's a small minor thing that doesn't really show up. And just as I expected from my other lenses, this 3528 is phenomenal. The build quality is there. It has a nice smooth focus throw. It has an aperture ring on it so I can change my aperture while I'm shooting. It's nice and small and it feels amazing in hand. I just love the build quality of these contact size lenses. It just feels like you have a premium product that you're shooting with. And it has the classic T-Star coating from Zai, so it doesn't flare up too much, but when it does, it has a nice tasteful flare to it. I'm not a big fan of modern lenses when they flare because they get this like really streaky kind of dotted flare. With these lenses, they just kind of fill up the whole frame and bloom and add in rainbows and ellipticals and colors. And the way that they flare is just really pleasing to the eye. Like the other contact size lenses, this lens is so sharp, but yet so full of character. Wide open at 2.8, it gets really funky and you have like this really nice bright center that just kind of feels really different. But when you stop it down to F4 or 5.6 and above, it just really sharpens up and the image just feels so nice. And again, with these vintage lenses, they just work so well on these modern bodies and I feel like the image from it looks way nicer straight out of camera than with a modern lens. The image out of this 35 millimeter lens is incredible. These contact lenses don't have too much contrast, but then they're also not super flat. They're definitely a nice happy medium with that and the color rendition out of this lens is incredibly accurate. It may not be insanely accurate on a color chart compared to like a modern lens, but for me, it just renders life really beautifully. These contact size primes are a healthy medium between full of character and really sharp. I picked up these lenses primarily because of that reason alone. I can use them in so many different scenarios from weddings to corporate to doc work to YouTube to travel and commercials and so many different things and it doesn't really have too much funk to it to where if I brought it on a certain set someone would probably be displeased by it. So I feel like the contact size primes are just that happy medium that a lot of people can't really get upset about. The colors out of this lens are phenomenal. I feel like it pairs really well especially with my Sony FX3. Sony cameras just feel a little funky when you throw on Sony glass. The colors just always feel a little plasticky but with this 35 millimeter and like my other contact size primes, the colors just really come alive out of this and it really pairs well with this sensor. These lenses paired with the FX3 kind of make it seem like I'm shooting on my C70 with like the organic grittiness to it, but it's not too much to where it doesn't really feel real. Real life just looks so good straight out of camera with this lens, especially on my FX3. And now I have my C70 and it pairs extremely well with that too. 35 millimeters is a great focal length. It pairs really well on a full frame sensor as well as a super 35 sensor.
closer. So I've been using this lens on a variety of different projects and cameras. When I first got this lens, I only had my Sony FX3 and I think like a couple weeks after we went to Italy. And this is the only lens I brought on that trip because one, I want to test out the lens and really see how it performed. Two, 35 millimeters is a happy medium between like a 28 and a 50. 35 paired with the FX3 stripped down was insanely compact and so easy to work with. And this 35 works so well on a full frame sensor for a walk around. And I definitely want to bring it out on a travel shoot again. Alongside the Sony FX3, I've also paired this lens with my Canon C70. And the Canon C70 has a Super 35 DGO sensor. And I've shot with this lens straight up on the camera with no speed booster and it looks incredible. But for the majority of the time that I'm shooting on the C70, I'm using the Canon Focal Reducer, which basically takes the imaging circle of a larger full frame lens and like kind of squishes it down and spreads it out on the Super 35 sensor. So I'm not really getting like a full frame look. I'm just getting a wider field of view out of this lens, which is almost like a one for one. I definitely feel like it's a little bit tighter than my FX3. It's not really that big of a deal. I'm getting an extra stop of light and more field of view out of my lens. So this 35 millimeter with the focal reducer on the C70 just works incredibly well. This lens is always on my camera right when I roll up to set and it's usually the first one that I start shooting with before I start getting details and wider shots. This 35 is just such a fantastic, high performing, just all around great lens to be working with and I'm excited to get it out on more sets in the future. So because this lens was the fifth in my kit, right when I bought it, I bought a bunch of mods from Simod. And I don't really like modding out my stuff too much. I only do the bare essentials. So I did the EF conversion because all my other lenses are EF converted and I can use it on so many different camera systems because everything converts to EF. I didn't want to do the CY mount to an E or CY to RF or EF just because those adapters are kind of hard to find and they're not as high quality as say the EF adapters for that specific camera system. So I have a good EF adapter for my Sony. I use the NovaFlex adapter. It's linked down below. And on my Canon C70, I have the normal EF to RF as well as the focal reducer. So EF is just sturdier, it's more universal, and if I have to rent a camera for a shoot, I know I can definitely use these lenses if that's the case. I also throw on focus gears because I like using follow focuses with my camera systems, especially on bigger sets when I'm going to have a bigger rig. And if I ever want to rent out these lenses, focus gears are definitely a high selling point for a lot of people because people use a lot of wireless follow focuses as well as manual follow focuses. And the last mods that I did to this lens are the front rings as well as the front caps. So with every lens, I always use a step up ring to go from the lens diameter to 82 millimeters. 82 is pretty much the biggest that I found on my lenses. My Sigma 2470 is a native 82 millimeter diameter for filters. So I'd rather just buy one kit of filters and use them on everything else and just buy like a cheap 82 millimeter cap to throw on the front ring. But with these lenses, because I'm going to be using them for cinema, getting a front ring just makes sense. So with this, you can clamp on a matte box to it, which is probably the way to go because when you focus these lenses, the barrel extends. So you can't really mount a matte box to your rods because this lens is gonna be moving back and forth. And then I don't like stacking step up rings. I'd rather just go from like the 50 millimeter or 55, whatever this is, straight to my 82, even though you get like a bunch of empty space there. But without the step up ring, the lens is insanely small, but I kind of need it for my FX3 because it doesn't have internal ND. I could take this off if I want to use it on my C70, but I'd rather just rock the kit like this because it's a lot easier. And then the front caps are really nice to see what lens you're actually grabbing. So when I'm out swapping lenses, I can look in my bag and see, okay, the 50's here, 85's here, 25's there. And I have to make sure that I put the right cap on the right lens because I don't want to grab a 35, go on a trip or go somewhere and be like, oh shoot, I have my 28 on me or my 25. So. Keeping that organized is just not that difficult, but it's really nice having these front caps because I can see what lens I'm actually using. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This 35 F2A AEJ is an incredible lens. And if you're finding yourself building a contact size kit, or if you're kind of interested in them, I highly recommend adding this lens to your kit. You probably don't need the 1.4. This 2.8 is amazing. I haven't found any issues with it. And 2.8 is plenty fast enough for a lot of use cases. So if you have any questions about this lens, leave them down below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And now it's time for some sample footage that I've got with this lens over the last handful of months. All the footage that I'm gonna show were shot on two cameras, the FX3 and the Canon C70. On the Canon C70, there was no other filtration attached to it. On the FX3, I just used my Nisi three-stop and six-stop IRNDs. I don't use diffusion filters with these lenses because they're so full of character enough. I don't really feel like I need to soften it up too much. So with all that, I hope you guys enjoy all the sample footage. See you guys in the next one. Peace.
to fall. 